Hi, I'm John Maher. I'm with Reset, an organization that uh, puts professional STEM volunteers in schools and work with children on experiments and activities, trying to get to children to see the fun side of STEM learning and hopefully to think about education and career choices in uh, related fields. Uh, during this uh, shutdown, we're in the middle of the coronavirus when I shot this, uh, we're showing experiments that can be done at home uh, by adults uh, using um, commonly found household materials. So for the first part of this session, what we need is a plastic bottle, we need some dishwashing detergent, we need a cup of water, which I have there, we need a tablespoon, uh, we need a piece of cloth, I'm using an athletic sock here, and we need a cup-like uh, container. So, um, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to be uh, talking about bubbles here today. So, we're going to create a bubble solution um, using the cup of water, eight ounces, or nine, is specifically what they call for. Uh, two tablespoons of the uh, dishwashing detergent. I want to uh, attribute this um, experiment to um, our staff member Sherry Cor recommended it. And it's, um, it's one of Steve Spangler's many, many experiments he has on the internet. We also need a, with the uh, drinking bottle, uh, 16 or 20 ounces. And the bottom of this has to be cut off, like a half inch away from the bottom. I did this using a hacksaw. This is why it's important that this video is aimed at adults um, to work with children. To cut that off. Uh, uh, you also could use a box cutter, which I think is even more dangerous. Um, or you could try piercing the bottom with one arm of a scissors and then uh, cutting around. I didn't try that, but uh, might be might be doable. So um, now we're going to take this athletic sock that I have, or you could use a part of a washcloth and put it around the bottom, cut off part of the bottle. Uh, if you use a, another kind of a cloth, like a washcloth, you may have to use a rubber band to hold it in place. And now I'm going to dip this in the solution we made of water and dish, uh, washing detergent. And now I'm going to blow through this end of it here. And put a little bit more on the end. And what you get is a frothy uh, bubble uh, formation at the end of the sock. And that's the, the way uh, bubbles are created here. Now, if you want to have a more impressive delay, you need some corn syrup. And I'll add like half a tablespoon of this to this solution. Stir it in. Now, according to the uh, instructions that uh, Steve Spangler provides, this should sit for 24 hours before you try it, but um, let's just give it a shot here and see what happens. Put the uh, sock back on the end of the plastic bottle. Dip it 
dip it in the solution and let's try again. And Steve calls this experiment his bubble snake. So let's just um, try it with one that's been sitting for 24 hours. See if there's any changes. What it's supposed to do is make longer lasting bubbles. Yeah, there's a bubble snake snake and falls to the ground, it'll probably last longer there. Um, that's our bubble steak. Now what um, Steve also said, let me just say if you have any um, food coloring, if you add some to the end of the covering on your bottom, you'll get a different color. Let's try that. Let's try well, let's try with balloons here. You can see that we've got a green snake bubble there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what makes bubbles. So in water, uh, the, the molecules of the water, little tiny particles uh, called molecules, um, attract each other. Um, now uh, they attract in all directions if you have a molecule of water say halfway down the depth of your glass. But at the very top, um, because there's no um, water molecule above that to, um, to uh, attract that molecule up to the top, from the top, uh, it's pulled in all other directions. And that creates a little bit of a film on the water, maybe like, um, like a peel. And, uh, and, and that um, is uh, something that we'll try to observe in the next part of, uh, of this session. So for this activity, we need a container of water. I'm using a plastic bin about five inches by eight inches. We need a paper clip and a square of paper towel about three inches by three inches and then we need the uh, dishwashing detergent again. Now I'm just going to put the camera down for a minute so uh, because this next step has to be done very gently and that is to pick up two sides of the paper towel and very gently lower it onto the surface of the water in the plastic container. So if you can see this, the paper towel is starting to float down to the bottom, but the paper clip it remains at the top. Um, even though gravity should explain it would sink to the bottom, we have this little um, peel or skin of tight molecules pulling together that uh, keep it on the top. Now I'm going to put a drop of paper. Of, uh, Hope you could see that. A drop of uh, dishwashing detergent, and immediately the uh, paper clip sinks to the bottom. So, um, what it, this peel or layer of tight molecules on the top is called creates what is called surface tension, and it enables that uh, uh, an object that would normally sink to the bottom, like a paper clip, to float on the top. And then what the um, the uh, dishwashing detergent does is to weaken the bonds between those top molecules um, and therefore the 
that um, reduces the surface tension and it no longer can support the weight of the paper clip and it sinks to the bottom.